We are now going to look at example one for dividends tax. This example illustrates the time when dividends tax should be levied in terms of section 64E. So this is the timing. Okay, so I'm going to remind you quickly of the timing. The timing says for, uh, let me actually do it like this, for a cash dividend and for a dividend in specie. Okay, if it is a unlisted company, then it is the earlier of when due or when paid. And that is the same, earlier of when due or when paid. If it is a listed company, if it's a cash dividend, it is when paid. And if the dividend is it is the earlier of when due or paid. So using color here, everything in yellow is the same, and everything in blue is different. So the only exception is a listed company paying a cash dividend is when it's paid. Right, so that's how I would study it. So what is the date of the dividend? So let's actually start here. A company, AAA is a company for the 31 December yen. AAA declares a dividend that is due and payable to all shareholders on that date. And they pay it on 1st of September. So it is, when is it, when is it due? 1 August. When was it paid? 1 September. So, if it is a AAA, AAA is a private company and it's a cash amount, you will use the, so, cash dividend, unlisted company, earlier of when due or paid. Okay, so, August. If it is a listed company and it's a cash amount, what's the rule? When it's paid. Right, so, it'll be 1 September. And then, in the next situation, it's a dividend in specie, and in both those situations, it is the earlier of when it's due or when it's paid. So it'd be the 1st of August. Example 2. This example illustrates the deemed dividend of section 64E4. A Limited is a company for 31 December yen. For the period 1 June to 31 December, so 214 days, A Limited granted a loan to Mr. X who holds 35% of the shares in A Limited. Okay, this is 20% or more of the shares, so thus they are connected persons. Remember, this only applies to connected persons. The loan is for 100,000 rands, and A Limited agree that the interest on the loan be 1%. The official interest is 8%. What is the deemed dividend amount here? Okay, so, remember, there's a deemed dividend in terms of section 64E4 if Mr. X is shield is not a company, and he's a resident, and he's connected. And you received because of his shareholding, which is the case. Section 64E4B2 tells us that it is calculated on the greater of the official interest rate, less the interest actually payable. So 100,000 times 8% minus 1% times 214 over 365 days, 4104. Or null. Okay, it must be either greater of those two amounts, so the 4104. It is treated as a dividend in specie, and it's treated as if it's paid on the last day of the year of assessment. This uh, company has a December yen, so it's treated as if it was paid on the 31st of December. Section 64K tells us that the dividends tax is payable by the end of the next month, so 31 January. And then guys, this is just a calculation. This is something I'd expect you to actually see a little bit more often. Excellent is a company for 31 December yen, and as a registered VAT vendor, on the 1st of April, they made a distribution of 500,000 to its shareholders. 80,000 of that is contributed tax capital. So 500,000 gets paid. 80,000 of that is contributed tax capital. And 420,000 rands of that is a dividend. These are the shareholders. They've got South African companies hold 20%. South African government holds 5%. PBOs hold 15%, foreign companies hold 10%, and national persons hold 50%. Now, there is no dividends tax, no dividends tax for South African companies, no dividends tax for the South African government, and no dividends tax for the PBO. So guys, I recommend you use a table like this. So here's the distribution amount, the full 500,000 rands. Okay, full 500,000 rands. You allocate it. 20%, so 500 times 20% is 100,000. 
500,000 times 5% 5 is 25, etc. Okay, so we allocate it. Then the contributed tax capital that is 80,000 rands. So again, you multiply 80,000 times 20 is 16, 80,000 times 15 is 12, etc. Okay, so now see A and B, A minus B gives the dividend. See, 420,000 rands the total there. Now the dividends tax is calculated at 20 percent. For the SA companies, government and PBOs, there's no dividends tax because it's exempt. He has all the references. For the foreign companies, all right, you say 42,000 times 8,400. Foreign companies are not an African company, so there is dividends tax. Natural persons, you say 210,000 times 20% gives us 42,000 rands. And then, here, guys, you don't always have to show this, but I want you to just remember what is the cash amount that the people receive in their bank accounts. Now, here students often make a very silly mistake. They will say, I'm going to use these natural persons. It is 210,000 minus 42,000. That's the cash amount. And that's wrong. Because how much did you actually receive? You received 250,000 rands. This is the actual cash that is allocated to you. The dividends tax is deducted from that. So 250,000 minus 42,000 gives us 208. 50,000 minus 8,400 gives us 41,600. 75,000 minus 0 gives us 75. 25 minus 0 gives us 25. Okay. These are the cash amounts. Make sure that you understand clearly the differences between the gross amount, the cash amount, counting profits. I want you to be very aware of that as you are studying these sections. Because be careful that they don't give you an exam, they don't give you the cash amount, and then you are using the wrong stuff. Okay, be aware of it. That's the best way. If you're aware of it, they can't catch you.